Seth, the police chief, uh, Chuck Lawson, are you here? Seth, uh, chief, chief Lawson, please come up here with us, um, along with FBI special agent in charge, Jamie Milligan. Jamie, are you? Okay. J Jamie's here. And, and to our friends at the U.S. Uh, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, the ATF, along with our Pennsylvania Attorney General's Office, want to thank them both very much for their support. Could not be here uh, with us on today, but are extremely valuable partners um, uh, with us um, in this fight uh, against illegal guns. Um, I want to take a moment as, as we begin to emphasize our commitment to law enforcement collaboration as we do our jobs to make Philadelphia what we hope to become, and that is the safest big city in America. Um, and that means not only the work of the men and women of our Philadelphia Police Department and our law department, it means all of the agencies and even legislative bodies and those of us who are elected to public office. Um, let me say for the record, District Attorney uh, Krasner, thank you so very much, sir, for being with us uh, here today and for our ongoing partnership. Sheriff, she's coming as soon as, soon as she gets finished answering those uh, questions um, and receptor. The reason why it was important for us to acknowledge each and every one of those par partners is because the public really doesn't care how things get done. They just care that we do get them done um, and help to keep them safe. Um, and they want to ensure that we don't have any silos in our uh, efforts. Um, that's what this news conference is all about. In a minute, uh, our city solicitor, um, that is the chief lawyer here in the city of Philadelphia, Renee Garcia, she is going to tell you about a very important settlement in detail that I gave you a snippet of about a day or two ago um, that the city of Philadelphia entered into last week with two companies that manufacture and distribute ghost guns. That's the name that they are called, ghost guns, right here in the city of Philadelphia. I need to, for the record, um, before Solicitor Garcia reach uh, to you, shares with you the settlement details, I need to thank three people, two of them are not here, for these three people were my teachers, my educators on the impact of ghost guns and how they had the uh, gun to uh, flood our community. That was uh, my colleague then during that time as a district council member, council uh, member Curtis Jones, Council President Johnson and former Council President um, Daryl Clark. It is what opened up my eyes so that when President Biden made his executive um, decision uh, doing what he could without legislative uh, action, I was familiar with that, Council Member Jones, because of uh, your, your advocacy and that of Council uh, President uh, Johnson and former Council uh, President Clark. Um, two things I do want to note is that because of this settlement, one of the companies and uh, Solicitor Garcia, I heard their names on television. And I was like, I, I know who these people are uh, now. Um, this was the Polymer 80. They can never again, Philadelphia, market or sell their daily products here in the city of Philadelphia. And this other company, JSD Supply, they are barred from selling or distributing ghost guns anywhere in Pennsylvania for the next four years. Um, I want you, if you can, to see, because uh, yeah, that is something to be excited about, right? But, Commissioner Bethel, Solicitor Garcia, and DA Krasner, although I knew because I learned what ghost guns were, I had never seen one before. On the table to the people of the city of Philadelphia, you are getting an opportunity now to see, and I'm a visual learner, now you can look at these ghost guns and know exactly what is being described when you hear about them in the future. I do right now want everyone in this room to give our city solicitor who led the legal charge and fight for our city a huge round of applause. This is not the matter. Thank you, Mayor Parker. I'm proud to 
announce that, as Mayor Parker shared, the City of Philadelphia has reached a settlement in the lawsuit against two major suppliers of illegal ghost guns, Polymer 80 and JSD Supply. Our law department team, some of which here are here today, went to the forensic lab two years ago to research this lawsuit, right, as we were gathering facts and learning about ghost guns. The next day, literally the next day, I found a Polymer 80 handgun outside my house on the sidewalk, broad daylight, fully loaded, one in the chamber. I, I hand to God, I actually um, texted uh, Director Garvey and said, look what I found. I was just there. I was just there, look what I found. That was the moment this became personal for me. And I know that many of you watching this, this is also personal because you have lost loved ones to gun violence because of these illegal guns. This past July, the law department filed our lawsuit, co-counsel Giffords Law Center to prevent gun violence, and the household, the Hausfeld Law Firm, which are here today as well, alleging that the named defendants have perpetuated gun violence crisis and threatened public rights, public right to health and safety by illegally distributing ghost gun kits in Philadelphia. These manufacturers have attempted to avoid liability by claiming that they are not selling guns, they are selling parts. But the gun parts and kits sold by these companies can be assembled at home into fully functional, unserialized firearms called ghost guns in as little as 15 minutes with simple household tools. So it comes in a kit, in 15 minutes you've got a gun that looks like that. Polymer 80 and JSD Supply ship their products to any address without a background check or any other effort to verify the buyer's identity or age as is required in Pennsylvania law, which means anyone, a criminal, a child, anyone that has a credit card could buy a ghost gun. Under the terms of the settlement, Polymer 80 is prohibited from ever advertising and selling ghost gun kits in Philadelphia. This is a huge win for the city of Philadelphia. 87% of the ghost guns recovered by the police department are made by Polymer 80, 87%. As we know, ghost guns are often bought outside of Philadelphia and brought into the city. The agreement also prevents the company from marketing and selling kits in the surrounding counties for four years. But wait, there's more. In the states surrounding Pennsylvania, Polymer 80s to check IDs and deny sales to Philadelphia residents forever and the color counties for four years. So someone can thank you. will also receive $1.3 million <laughs> over four years <laughs> for the harm that they have caused. And these funds will be used by the city to prevent and remediate harms caused by the gun violence crisis. The settlement also requires JSD Supply, the biggest distributor of ghost guns in the state, to cease all sales in Pennsylvania for four years. And do you know the Eagle Gun Shows? You've heard the Eagle Gun Shows? They have to prevent vendors from selling ghost gun kits for two years at the Eagle Gun Shows. I want to thank Giffords Law Center for their expertise and extensive research they contributed to this lawsuit. We are incredibly grateful for their partnership and their ongoing commitment to this issue. I want to also acknowledge the partnership of Council President Kenyatta Johnson in our fight against ghost guns. Council President Johnson sponsored the innovative Ghost Gun Ordinance, which outlaws the manufacture of ghost guns and transfer of ghost gun parts for people who do not have federal firearm licenses. That ordinance was litigated and recently withstood a legal challenge in the Commonwealth Court, and we expect that the it will prevail also in the PA Supreme Court. We will continue to defend the ordinance and fight for every resident's right to health and safety in their neighborhood using every legal tool as at our disposal. And I would now like to welcome David Pacino. There he is from the Giffords Law Center to make some remarks as well.
Thank you, Solicitor Garcia, and congratulations to you and your team on this tremendous outcome in this case. Uh, I'm David Pacino. I'm the legal director and deputy chief counsel of Gifford Law Center to prevent gun violence, which is a gun violence prevention organization that was founded and led by former congresswoman and gun violence survivor Gabby Giffords. As a survivor-led organization, we have a simple mission, which is to save lives. We do that by fighting back against the lawlessness and recklessness by those who bring guns into our community and put them in the hands of people who should not have them. And we do that by holding those who break our laws accountable for the harm that they cause. In doing that work, I've become very familiar with ghost guns in general, and in particular the biggest purveyors in the state of Pennsylvania, Palmer 80 and JSD Supply. A ghost gun is an untraceable gun that's sold without a background check. A ghost gun is a cynical and reckless attempt to evade our laws. A ghost gun is a gun trafficker's dream. And too often, a ghost gun is used in a shooting and it's the murder weapon. This is not something that we should tolerate, and it's not something that we have to tolerate. And this settlement is the way out for us. This agreement will stop these companies from selling these parts that we know are going to end up in Pennsylvania. The settlement is the broadest in terms of the parts that are covered of any settlement that's been reached in this country. It is going to keep this community safer, and it is going to save lives. I've been very proud to be part of the pro bono team representing the city in this case. I want to thank the Housefeld Law Firm, who have been indispensable partners and spent countless hours providing free legal services to the city to get us to where we are today. I want to thank all of those who support the work of my organization and refuse to accept that gun violence is a reality we have to live with and to fight back against it. And I'm so grateful for those partnerships and that commitment because no one person can end gun violence alone. We need lawyers, we need advocates, we need community members, but more than anything, we need courageous leaders. And so I particularly want to thank the members of the council and you, Mayor Parker, uh, for your leadership on this issue, for being that courageous leader who's willing to step up and fight the criminal violence that plagues our communities, the wrongdoers who will inflict harm onto us for personal gain. Um, so thank you for having that courage and that commitment to being the leader who brings Philadelphia into this status as the national leader of fighting gun violence. So again, I, I thank the mayor for her leadership and, and, and council here as well, but I would be remiss if I don't take an opportunity. Our forensic team is here from our firearms investigation unit, but I'd like them to step forward. I mean, the, the, oftentimes they're behind the scenes. Step up for a minute, and just step, so everybody know who you are. Right here, but, but these men and women are uh, behind the scenes. We, we, we talk a lot about guns at oftentimes, but we also don't recognize the individuals behind the scenes who are doing their testing and, and doing all the things to make those DNA matches and, and that type of work. We just appreciate the effort that you put in to do that. Yeah, I mean, clearly we understand the homicides are coming down this year um, considerably, and, and we're very, very pleased with that, but we still have a lot of work to do. The proliferation of guns across our country, uh, across our nation, is a multifaceted issue. And stemming the tide of those guns flowing into our city is, is the approach that we must take. Uh, ultimately, the ease of which individuals are able to obtain illegal firearms continues to be a serious issue for all of us. And one of the main contributors to uptick in gun violence is guns, and particularly these ghost guns. You know, the Philadelphia Police Department, I continue to be extremely proud of the men and women of the Philadelphia Police Department. Last year, the men and women of the Philadelphia Police Department took over 6,015 crime guns off the city of Street. But the reality of that, within that, 526 of those were ghost guns. And, and so, you know, when you look at those numbers, clearly the work that's underway will have an impact. You know, often hear us say, you know, one of the, we take one gun off the street, we get two, right? And oftentimes those ghost guns are contributed to, to that process. A gun, a ghost guns have been a nightmare for, for, for the city of Philadelphia and, and the Philadelphia Police Department. You know, we watch as this is outlined by the city solicitor with private sellers and not having the background checks or the like. Or more importantly, we look at the most recent shootings that we had last year, the Kensington incident shooting where the individual had an AR-15, which was a ghost gun. You know, and even most recently last week where we had a shooting uh, at the Edge celebration, six guns were recovered. Two of those weapons were ghost guns. And so you can see the direct impact that has on our community and the work that we do. And so the settlement agreement marks an important step in keeping our community safe. 
by mitigating untraceable firearms will make it harder for criminals, and particularly our young people, which we see are carrying these weapons out of their hands. So I applaud the tireless work uh, of the city uh, for the city solicitors, the mayor, and everyone involved in helping secure this, uh, this agreement. Lastly, I want to uh, want everyone to know that the police department stands ready, along with our fellow stakeholders, to continue to tackle this issue. As the mayor indicated, it's a group effort, and we support and uh, be able to take a part in that role. Thank you. So I'm delighted to be here with some good news around guns. The truth is, this is really good news. This is a wonderful indication of what can happen when the city and its lawyers and our allies out in the community get together and we use every resource we have. Uh, the reason I say it's good news is because we don't always have good news. They should not exist. These guns should not exist. You heard something earlier that, that Mr. Pacino said. These guns didn't exist first, and then somebody looked at the law. The way they made these guns was they looked at the law to find the loopholes. Every aspect of how these guns are in separate bags of parts are put together. Every aspect of that was to make sure you could put something that kills people on the street in the most unaccountable way possible. We're talking about guns that don't have serial numbers. We're talking about guns that are made of plastic. We're talking about guns that show up at the scenes of shooting more and more and more year over year over year. Those guns are for nothing but crime. That's exactly what their purpose is. That's what it was. And the reality is that the criminal justice system is not very good at prosecuting men in white shirts who sit behind a desk and make millions of dollars off of their corporations. We are way better at persecuting, excuse me, way better at prosecuting people who take these hellacious tools while that person behind the desk gets away. Well, at least today, through the hard work of our city solicitor, through the mayor's guidance, through the excellent work done by the Gifford Center and this law firm who are here, at least today, we put a little nick in their armor. At least today, we did something to them. At least today, we can make it harder for there to be more and more of these guns on the street, and we can make it easier for our law enforcement officers who are on the street, because maybe there won't be quite as many. And that is a good day for all of us, and, and I must say, it would be nice if we had a good day coming from the United States Supreme Court, which, oh, wow. which seems to spend all this time helping. There would be more guns than people. It would be nice if we had a break from some of our Pennsylvania courts who made it harder and harder for law enforcement to search people, search cars for guns. It would be nice if we had a good day from the Pennsylvania legislature, who every single day they don't write the law that makes that impossible, enable this. But we do have a good day today when it comes to civil litigation around this issue. We have a real victory. And I, for one, am absolutely grateful and delighted. Thank you. Uh, Philadelphia uh, Sheriff Rochelle, Rochelle Bilal was scheduled to uh, join us on today, but she is still downstairs testifying, upstairs testifying in, uh, in budget hearings. Um, I also just wanted to note uh, for the record that it was on April the 11th, uh, the Biden-Harris administration approved expansion of background checks on gun sales. And I noted here, thanks uh, to my team for providing this information, that this new rule, uh, which is likely to face legal challenges, is an attempt to regulate a fast-growing shadow market of weapons that has fueled gun violence. Um, this is an update from the Biden-Harris administration, but it makes me feel good, Solicitor Garcia, to say that while our federal partners are doing what they can do with what they have, we achieve some action and results uh, through your leadership, and I'm extremely uh, grateful for that. Uh, any questions from anyone assembled here from the press? Uh, Anna? Uh, Commissioner Bethel, the... Those guns that were found at the scene of the Eve celebration, were they used in that shooting? Did they, did they match any of the ballistic evidence found? Um, we're not prepared to share that. The analysis is still underway, uh, but we would not be able to share that at this point. Yes. She, 
If you would, just for it, ma'am, we were just letting them know you were testifying. Thanks for coming. But we talked about an intergovernmental uh, partner, uh, partnership with all of the agencies uh, who are present. Our Sheriff Rochelle Bilal is an essential uh, part of it. Sheriff, we want you to say a few words uh, about the settlement. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Appreciate it. First of all, we are really happy that there is a settlement to keep those unidentified weapons off our streets. And as a partner in the law enforcement part of the city, we are one Philly, and we're going to work together to make sure that our city stays safer, cleaner, and greener. You're I want you with me all the time, Sheriff <laughs> No, uh, there was a gentleman back here at the camera. Thank you, Madam Sheriff, for coming down. I know you just rushed. I want you to know we appreciate it. It's not lost on us. Yes, sir. To, to members of the, the people of the city of Philadelphia, uh, one of the promises I think each and every one of us here um, assembled has agreed to do is make your public health and safety our number one priority. And each and every agency that is here today has a, a very specific lane uh, that they work in. And our job is to use every tool, every legal tool in our tool belts to make Philadelphia the safest city in the nation. And um, we're going to do it. Uh, thank you for affirming in that question that this is not the, uh, the magic wand. I would argue, Philadelphia, that if anyone ever stands before you to tell you that the, the violent crime that we're seeing take place with illegal guns like the ghost guns, they have the one solution that if we would do this one thing, Commissioner Bethel, all of it, Director Gear, would go away. That's not true. It will take all of us uh, working together, doing everything that we can, and we won't stop and or be satisfied. Um, uh, Commissioner Bethel, I so appreciate every time I hear you publicly affirm that our violent crime numbers are indeed statistically decreasing. But if you were to go out into our neighborhoods and into our city until people feel like the statistics, none of us can or will be satisfied. Appreciate that question. We've got a lot of work to do. One final question. One more. I'm sorry, District Attorney. Sí, uh, el, el mensaje a los padres en la comunidad es que no podemos aceptar la existencia, la posesión de estas armas. Tenemos que estar seguros, tenemos que vivir seguros y por eso padres, mamás, papás, buscamos en el cuarto del joven. Tenemos que impedir esto. Gracias. <laughs> I, I, I really just love to say, um, gracias. <laughs> the district attorney's Spanish is much better than mine, but know that the city's abogada is here, our abogados are here, we are strong, we are fuerte, and we will keep fighting for justicia. Thank you. Gracias. Welcome to the street, huh? Listen, oh, 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 oh there's two more here, yes? So you know, close to 10 percent of the guns we are we're recovering from the ghost guns. Um, so I mean, it, it has an impact, right? I mean, you know, I think the mayor talked about it, and this is continuous. This is a part of a. You know, we start with the, the you know addressing the issues of, of, of straw purchasing and and, and working with the AG's office and working with work with AT, ATF for looking at the distribution of guns and coming from the south and many of working with our men and women who are making those arrests, working with the gang, you know, the gun task force with the DA's office, and now he just instituted a new 
uh, prolific on uh, Corey. They work with our FBI colleagues. I mean, so all of these pieces are hopefully will have an impact, and we will know. We're tracking our, our guns. We know over, you know, they've been pretty consistent over around 550 average uh, of ghost guns a year, so we'll know, be able to measure the impact of this by seeing if we're actually seeing a reduction. Now, that may be a challenge because many of the guns we're seeing are older than three years. So we track guns when they are recovered. The majority of our guns are older than three years. And so many of the things are still in the pipeline, so we may not see an immediate decrease, but we hopefully over time we may see some impact here. I just want to thank the, uh, the commissioner and also the mayor for pushing me back up here to say what I should have said the first time, which is that we have just launched a new unit in the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office known as the Prolific Gun Offender Unit. It was funded by our friends and elected officials in city council, and I'm extremely grateful for that. They have been working in this space tirelessly now for the entire time that I've been around to try to help them out in that regard. Uh, and as it happens, the new chief of our prolific gun offender unit, Jeff Palmer, is right here. If he looks familiar, that's because he was the assistant chief in the Gun Violence Task Force, another unit that has done tremendous work with the Philadelphia Police, with the FBI, with SEPTA, with ATF. Uh, and of course, it is a collaboration with the Attorney General's office to try to bring down groups of shooters, to try to deal with strong straw purchasing, and other horrific things like this table full of guns here. And then, of course, our homicide non-fatal shooting unit works tirelessly on the homicides and the shootings that are the result of there being far too many guns out there. But I truly want to thank the city for its support of this new unit, which I think is very promising to get us even closer to where we need to be. Great. Appreciate that. Also, uh, Commissioner Bethel just said something else while he was speaking that um, I know when I heard him uh, mention it during uh, a briefing. Uh, my eyes opened wide and I said, wow, um, another affirmation of uh, why intergovernmental uh, and interagency partnerships matter. If we see a proliferation of guns that are coming uh, from outlets, retail outlets, commercial outlets that are in, in the South and they are being transported on our interstate to reach the city of Philadelphia, that means our Pennsylvania State Police and all of the inter-state uh, police uh, law enforcement uh, agencies that are there, we need to be communicating with them. Philadelphia, I didn't know it until uh, Commissioner Bethel said that that's a thing. And uh, it's something that we should be uh, very uh, cognizant of. One more question here, yes ma'am. So one, this is an announcement of a settlement. We haven't gotten a check yet to tell you that the city of Philadelphia has put it at the bank. When we do, our ultimate goal is to use it as a part of the, the comprehensive uh, sort of solutions and uh, that we are proffering to address the issue of uh, gun violence here in the city of Philadelphia. And so once it goes into the general fund, we're working uh, with the city council of Philadelphia. We will uh, proffer some ways I can think of anti-violence organizations that are on the ground doing meaningful work trying to encourage our young people to not pick up uh, one of these ghost guns uh, in particular, and not just the ghost guns. I'm also thinking about a round table that we had in this room not long ago, um, where agencies, some of the leaders that you see standing here, um, for the first time that I had seen in a very long time, um, we were silent and listening to the young people tell us how easy they could, easily they could access a weapon and literally if the commissioner said a type of weapon, Council President Johnson could say a type of weapon, they would tell you on the street at that very moment how much it would cost in order uh, to buy it. So a holistic approach, we don't appropriate what we don't have in the bank yet, but as soon as we get it, we will give it to you and I want the commissioner to tell you about those stats.
as far as the, we know that 9% of all, 17 under 9%, so the 6,015 guns that I described are recovered, 9% of them are by juveniles. What I can't tell you today is how many of those guns, but I can get that information for you, are worth by juveniles. Thank you all so very much for being Thank here with us. So the work continues. Thank you.